Morning, good evening, grace, brother, and sister, and uh, great to have you back along with us here with our Word Awakening and our uh, midweek prayer meeting. And uh, so we'll go ahead and get started and uh, get uh, right into uh, things here uh, by way of announcements. Of course, in just a little bit, we'll be doing our Bible Institute class in the book of John and being a temperance awakening, starting our alcohol lectures here as well this week and be uh, back back with our uh, midweek uh i'm sorry with our weekend our weekend study in the book of haggai i look forward to what we have this week as well then be beginning the 35th psalm on sunday so that's what we got going on this week uh, by way of a prayer request as we've been uh, mentioning my mother-in-law she is going to be having a procedure done on uh, monday that's monday the 17th of january of 2022 at the present time of this uh, recording and so, as we've been saying, she's going to have something done. And this here is going to be an outpatient procedure. This is something that should only last a couple of hours. They're going to do a block, if you're familiar with that. Like a block in her back to try to keep her uh, back and hip and things from hurting. And also keep praying for my wife. She actually also has an appointment as well tomorrow with a physician. Another one. Uh, she's had stomach pain and head pain here off and on for about a year and a half. So, you know, pray that that would get resolved. She gives some relief from that. <clears throat> and, um... And, uh... And, of course, remember the ministry and all that we're doing here. Of course, my family kind of preparing to move here, getting ready to move here late spring, early summer to New York State to do church planning, I'll start us a Bible, get us a Bible college campus, and so forth. So be us. So always, you know, so need your prayer for our ministry and all that we do here. Very, very busy. And uh, so, so I'm also praying for all the needs that you have, all these, uh, you know, I know there are many that we don't know that are out there, all, the, all those on the bit of affliction, all the physical needs, financial needs, emotional needs, spiritual needs, whatever they might be. I'm uh, certainly going to take and pray that God uh, would be with each and every need that you have, that God would save the lost, amen, and reclaim the backslid and help hearts and souls as only he can. And I'm going to go to a pretty popular text here, one of the more popular prayers in the Bible in First Chronicles chapter 4. Uh, you know the Bible, you know exactly where I'm going here. First Chronicles chapter 4, and I'll be looking at verses 9 and 10. It says in Jab uh, Jabez, I believe that's how you're supposed to pronounce his name, Jabez. Guess that could depend on where you're from, what your accent is. But And Jay Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. And may the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word here. And so this is the prayer of Jabez. The prayer of Jabez. And it says there in verse 9, He was more honorable than his brethren. He was more honorable, so he lived an honorable life. And like we know, if our prayers are going to be right, if we're going to put up the best prayers that we can, that, you know, we need to be honorable, you know, honorable in the sight of God. And here Jabez prayed that God would bless him and enlarge his coast and that God would be with him. And see there, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil. See, Jabez certainly wasn't praying um, selfish prayers. He wanted to be kept from evil. He wanted to have blessings that would honor and glorify the Lord, and that God would be with him. See, that's what we need to pray. See, it's not wrong to have things, as that, you know, might almost sound a bit contrary uh, to what we preach and teach here with this ministry. It's not wrong to have things, but, you know, why do we want the things? Of course, above all, you know, we should want revival. We should want the presence of God. And God knows the needs that we have. You know, God knows that we need a house to live in. Uh, God knows that, uh, you know, we have need of, you know, transportation, you know, clothes, food, etc. But we want all of that to honor and glorify the Lord. You know, I was thinking, you know, a, a bit ago, you know, like you talk about missionaries, you know, raising support, you know, getting money from people. But, you know, if missionaries are what they should be, you know, and as, you know, you've been around missionaries and heard the type of preaching, you know, missionaries don't want that money for their own self, you know, to just bag their pockets, to live in luxury. You know, they want that money to be used to win lost people. You know, to win lost people, you know, to see God move in certain areas. And, you know, with support, you know, we might, you know, you know, we might eat food, you know, use support, you know, to buy food, etc., but, you know, ultimately, you know, that that's not even for us. You know, that's not even for me, you know, whenever I consume food to get energy. I want to consume food and have energy. 
to be a servant of God, to serve other people, to be a servant, not for my own self, not for my own luxury, but that God would use me, that God would be with me, see, that we certainly would be kept from evil, that we would be kept from lust, that we would be kept from pride, you know, that we would be kept from a luxurious way of thinking and be that servant and be what God would have us to be and do what God would have us to do, amen, that we would have revival. You know, that's what I'm all about. Yes, revival. Because if we have revival, then lost people will get saved. You know, Christians will get where they need to be, will have the right ministries. You know, God will call the right men to preach. You know, and God will use people appropriately if our prayers are right and we're honorable. So great stuff there from the Word of God. And so let's uh, aim to do that there. You know, pray that God would bless us with the right things. That we would be kept from evil and that we, we would be used of Him in a mighty, mighty way. <clears throat> and with all that being said, we'll go ahead now here and I begin praying. Our Lord, we sure do love you, and we thank you for the gifts of sin, and thank you so much for our salvation and all that you've done for us, Lord. Thank you so much for this ministry, for what you've called us to do, what you've led us to do. And our prayer certainly is, Lord, that all of us would be faithful, that we would be what we should be to build your kingdom, that we would do what we should do, Lord, to build your kingdom, that we would ever be faithful, that we would walk with you, and that way that would be pleasing unto you. And we pray, Lord, that you would just be with us, Lord, as we call out to you in prayer, as we pray over all the needs that are among us. For my mother-in-law's procedure coming up, that she would find relief, and for my wife as well, that uh, her abdomen pain would be resolved, and all the needs that our dear listeners have, you know, and all those that we're not aware of, for those on the bed of affliction, you know, those uh, other people that are going to be having procedures, those recovering from certain procedures, and uh, people, you know, that have financial needs, spiritual needs, people that are holding grudges, trying to get the victory over things, that you would help them, that she would cleanse all of our hearts and cleanse all of our minds and just give us a heart for revival. Those that are backslid, walking afar off, we pray that you would reclaim them. Those that are lost, you know, we all have lost relatives, lost acquaintances. And I pray that you'd save those people, you know, situations that people may have on the job. Uh, you know, at work, you know, in the ministry, you know, situations that churches have. <clears throat> That you would be with them. You know, we pray for all churches, for Bible-believing churches. You know, for the pastors of, of these churches, for the deacons, the Sunday school teachers, uh, the uh, those that take part, the ushers, all the members. Pray for all the missionaries, evangelists, that you'd be with each and every one of them. All the ministries that are out there, for the young preachers, for the lay preachers, those in Bible colleges, that you touch and be with them in a special way, Lord. And I pray that you would just touch all of our hearts and souls to walk after you, Lord, to go down that path that you have for each and every one of us. You know, may we be like the Apostle Paul when it's all said and done, saying, you know, I finished my course, I've kept the faith. <coughs> you know, I've done the very best that I could do. And I pray that we would all do that, Lord, that we'd all be faithful, that we would be obedient, and that we would just walk with you and do those things, Lord, that you take pleasure in, do those things that you're satisfied with. You know, we would make the right sacrifices and have the right offerings. And that we would just seek after you and look after you that have that heart for revival. That you'd call more people into revival. Call more men to preach. More men to be revivalists. You know, raise up ladies to marry these men and give more people, even lay people, a heart for prayer. A heart for revival. A heart for the things of God. Not the things of the world, but the things of you, Lord. That you would just fill us up. That we'd be filled with the Holy Spirit. That we'd do just that work that you'd have us to do. And do that what you've called us to do and ever be faithful to you. Father, be biblical in all things. You know, be the right parents. You know, that's you know that's where people have failed, you know, in this last couple of generations. You know, I pray that as parents, you know, we teach our children the Bible. Teach our children what is right. Teach our children to do wholesome things. You know, not just be people that sit in front of a television and, and play video games. You know, but people that uh, uh, but raise up another generation. You know, like it says in Deuteronomy 6, that we teach the Bible too. That we teach to love you. That we teach to walk after you your will and after your way, that we have biblical standards. We not give ourselves to the ways of the world or be influenced by Hollywood, you know, but just get things out of our life that shouldn't be and put things in our life that should be, Lord, and just ever be faithful to you, Lord, and walk after your will and, and after your way. And just live in purity and be a whole people, a people with a heart and a mind focused on you, Lord. And may you bless us. You know, may you answer our prayers like you did Jabez and give us that which we need to do your work and will. You know, like missionaries, you know, that do need support, you know, just to win lost people, to have revival. 
you know, to start the appropriate ministries, you know, so that communities around the world have a Bible preaching church. You know, that you'd supply the needs of your people, you know, and of your churches, you know, and give us that which we need spiritually. You know, the right brain, you know, and the right heart, you know, to study the Bible, the boldness, you know, to be the right witness, to give the gospel out. And may we just all be used of you in a mighty, mighty way and ever be faithful. And may you just help us, Lord, as we go our respective ways and do our respective duties and bring us back here at the next point in time, Lord, with more of a heart for revival and more of a heart for you, Lord. For it's in the blessed name of Jesus Christ we pray all these things. Amen. Amen. And thank you so much, folks, for being with us here with our midweek prayer meeting. And so be with us throughout this week with our Bible Institute Temperance Awakening. And right back here this weekend with our weekend study in the book of Haggai. And we'll see you then until the direction the shadows flee away. I am Dr. Coop and I love you. And I appreciate you.